According to the most recent Stack Overflow survey with over 65,000 respondents worldwide, only one in five software developers are actually happy with their current job, meaning 80% were either unhappy or simply complacent. This is a drastic change from the same survey done just four years ago in 2020, where, and I quote, most developers are happy with their jobs. And the one done just two years after that in 2022, with 70% of developers being happy and only 15% being indifferent slash complacent. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that there is something drastically wrong here. But who am I? And why should you even care in the first place? I'm Bago. I landed my first six-figure software engineering job in the junior year of university. After climbing the corporate ladder, and working for various Fortune 500 companies, I went on to co-found a seven-figure B2B consulting firm. Today, I'm here to share with you three pieces of advice that should you follow, you too will be in the top 1% of software engineers within no time. Whether you're a beginner or an established expert, I believe the takeaways in this video will help you on your journey. But before we dive in, what makes a top 1% software engineer? If I had to sum it up in a sentence, it would be this. While a top 1% software engineer is a good programmer, a good programmer is not a top 1% software engineer. This should tell you that there is a lot more to software engineering than just being able to program. This leads me to my first piece of advice. You see, I've seen way too many software engineers see how much a quant developer gets paid on YouTube or on levels.fyi, and they decide it's time for them to become a quant developer themselves. So what they do is they spend time watching more videos and spending the minimal effort in applying to these jobs, these quant jobs, despite having no transferable experience or skills. And when they get rejected, they're shocked as to how they got rejected. They get demotivated and then until they see another video and then they see how much ML engineers this time are getting paid and then the cycle repeats itself and so on and so on. People nowadays seem to just hail Mary any job they see with no specific goal for what they want to do. And how do I know all of this? Well, because I was guilty of this myself. However, luckily for me, the job market back in my days was in a much better condition and it was a lot more forgiving. You cannot afford to do this nowadays in today's market. The worst thing you can do nowadays is blindly follow trends. So heed my first piece of advice. Define your goals and what you specifically want. The only way for you to counter the shiny object syndrome running rampant in the software engineering space today is by defining your goals. But how do you actually define your goals? Well, you need to define your goals by understanding your strengths and weaknesses and what your overwhelming advantage is in, whether it's in your location, network, or simply past experiences. Start with a deep self-assessment. Begin by listing your core skills and experiences, noting where you excel and where you might need a little bit of improvement. Consider your past projects and roles. What tasks did you find most engaging and where did you receive the most praise or recognition? This reflection helps identify your strengths. Next, think about your weaknesses, areas where you might need further development or training. This honest self-assessment lays the foundations that you need for setting realistic and achievable goals. Additionally, you'll need to evaluate your external advantages. Your location might offer unique opportunities or limitations. For example, living in a tech hub like San Francisco or New York could actually provide more networking and job prospects. Your professional network is another actually crucial factor in this. Are there any mentors or peers who can support your career progression? Lastly, consider your past experiences. Have they equipped you with any specialized knowledge or insights that give you an edge in specific areas? By combining all these internal and external factors, you can now craft well-defined, actionable goals that align with your unique strengths and circumstances. And once you define your goals and have an idea of what to pursue, you need to put all your eggs in one basket and commit to it. After you have defined your goals, you need to take action. But more specifically, you need to take action that will give you the highest leverage. If you think back to the intro of this video, only one in five developers were happy. Can you guess which one of those five were the happy ones? Well, I would say the ones that had the best compensation, work-life balance, and flexibility. And if you're wondering how to be the minority of software engineers that actually land these types of jobs, well, that's where my second piece of advice comes in, and that is to focus on your network. Close to 50% of the hires at Fang come through referrals, and that percentage is a lot higher at other companies. 
the same exact hires that came to referrals also have an even higher chance of being promoted and moving up the corporate ladder. Unfortunately, the world is not perfect. People aren't always hired or promoted on merit. For every good candidate out there, there is another one that is closer with the hire manager or the CEO. It took me a long time to figure out the importance of a good network, especially in software engineering. We are often told that as software engineers, we should be a lone wolf, right? This is a lone wolf type of job. You can sit at home with no human contact and just get paid six figures doing absolutely nothing. But truth be told, this is the furthest thing from the truth. If you wanna be part of the top 1% of software engineers, you need the appropriate network. Without it, you cannot succeed. To network effectively as a software engineer, there's a lot of things you could be doing. And you can start by actually going to industry events like conferences, meetups, hackathons, because these events are great for meeting other people who share not only your same interests, but they can also potentially help you in your career. And even if you're at work, build good relationships with your colleagues and mentors and managers and C-suite executives. Offer to help with projects and share your knowledge. A good reputation at your work can lead to even more opportunities down the line. And another hidden gem when it comes to networking is to contribute to open source projects. By working on popular open source projects, you not only improve your coding skills, but also connect with influential developers who are also contributing to the same project that you are. These connections can lead to job opportunities, collaborations, and many other valuable recommendations. And many hiring managers and companies will appreciate you having contributed to open source projects. Last but not least, you can use social media to actually show off your skills and projects, especially the open source ones. You can use LinkedIn and Twitter, even though I would say focus on Twitter, LinkedIn has dropped in quality, but both are great for sharing what you've accomplished and connecting with others in your industry. Keep in touch with the people you meet, send them follow-up messages and check in regularly as well. But a network doesn't only help you with landing a job. It will also help you get your first client for your business. And this is my final piece of advice. Give entrepreneurship a try at least once. I have seen too many veterans in the space tell me they regret not giving entrepreneurship an honest try. They always tell me that 30 years they spent in a space passed in a blink of an eye and now they don't have much to show for it. You cannot rely on anybody else but yourself for the well-being of yourself and your family. And being an entrepreneur lets you do exactly that. And as a software engineer, I already talked about this in my other videos, but you as a software engineer have an overwhelming advantage in creating new products and solutions. And one of the best things about entrepreneurship is that it gives you the freedom that you wouldn't have otherwise. You get to choose your own projects, you get to choose your own schedule, you get to make your own decisions. It just makes this a lot more satisfying and enjoyable. And not only that, but one of the biggest advantages of entrepreneurship is the bigger financial rewards versus a regular salary job. Sure, your salary job might be a bit more comfortable and offer a steady income, but with the business, you can earn a lot more than that. Lastly, being an entrepreneur helps you learn and grow in many other areas. You'll need to develop skills like marketing, sales, finance, leadership, not just coding. And this makes you a lot more versatile and ready to handle different challenges. So the journey of entrepreneurship just literally teaches you that failure is a chance to learn and get better. And this mindset is valuable for both your professional and personal growth. So always remember, define your goals, focus on your network, and give entrepreneurship a try at least once. And if you want to know how you can specifically transition from a software engineer to an entrepreneur, then you need to watch this video next. As always, thank you for watching.